Spurgeon here with High Side, Low Side, and on the couch today, I've got Lem Lem on my far left, I got Bearded Joe on my immediate left, and if you are watching this on YouTube, not listening in your old ear holes in the podcast, you'll notice that I am currently sitting in the hot seat. I am sitting in the, the fun seat where I get an armrest, and I get a stack of cards, and I get to ask all the questions today, and that's because Lem has a special announcement that he'd like to share with us right now. Do well, tell. It's, it's, not, it's not really that special. This is actually my uh, last episode of a High Side, Low Side. Woo! Um, for, yeah, for quite a while now, I have uh, convinced Revzilla into paying me monies to sit around <laughs> on couches and talk to my friends about motorcycles. Don't blow it for us, man. Well, I was going to say, which is funny. <laughs> no, no, because we're, I, we're still getting paid. <laughs> I don't worry. Have, yeah, I would have done this for free, yeah. or at least very little. <laughs> um, but as Spurge always says, it is time for me to get up and move... Beyond the couch. <laughs> Fear not, though. You can still find my words over at Common Tread. That's um, a, well, as sad that. as I am to hear about our fuzzy-headed buddy uh, leaving the couch, <laughs> um, don't fret. Spurgey and I are going to keep this bike rolling down the highway, so don't be afraid to tune in to our last episode for Season 2, where we have some super-duper special guests hitting up our sleeves. And uh, also, <laughs> don't, <laughs> forget, asking for that one. don't forget to check out the podcast, Go to wherever you find your podcast and type in Revzilla. You'll see the high side, low you side the hands, podcast. Man. You got the little typey hands. You got the typey hands. <laughs> so in there, uh, there's some extra stuff like uh, interviews with some important people in the motorcycle community and also viewer comments. So check that out. So you got to make sure you're leaving comments so that we have something to respond to and we can uh, call you out and throw you under the bus if we decide to. <laughs> as that, now, we, now as he announces today's topic. <laughs> today's topic is actually going to be things that motorcyclists do that annoy us, that annoy all of us, that annoy the public that annoy your mechanic that annoy us sitting the on the private. couch <laughs> what <laughs> the private the private you said annoy the public so they must annoy the private yeah. so let's kick things off with the first question of the day what are some things that motorcyclists have a tendency to say or do while riding that you find annoying <laughs> go ahead lem so before I answer anything personally, I'm going to make a qualifying statement. This may or may not apply to you guys. Feel free to co-opt it as your own if you'd like. <laughs> I am about to spend the next 30 minutes complaining about things other people do. I'm going to be a huge hypocrite. Right. I'm not taking any of this very seriously. This I don't actually fun. care. Oh, you are but getting I do... into you're getting into some of our questions here now. Like I I'm not allowed when I'm sitting in that seat, I'm not allowed to stomp all over your questions. So we're now getting Fair. into some of my later questions where I talk <laughs> about I think you being he's a just trying to say as a blanket statement, this is for fun. Right. If you're very <laughs> sensitive <laughs> yes. and you think you're going to get mad, just yeah. turn it off and go watch something right. else. Make the corners of your mouth go up, yeah. not down when you're hearing about this. Uh, so the way you it's weird the way you've written this question i i almost don't have an answer to it because oh my god well when someone is riding a motorcycle you're doing the thing that i uh, dig and like i'm probably going to get along well with you this is I, a so, very specific so, question but i'm gonna i'm gonna call i'm gonna call bullshit on on lemmy for a second because i know for a fact that one of the things that you and i disagree on is like the motorcycle wave that's something that like you don't like to do and like you don't find that appealing and it's something that's like i always get excited about i'm like hey <laughs> all right folks put your helmets on uh, i hate the wave it's so dumb i do it to everyone because i feel like uh, if i don't i yeah, impact someone else's jerk. day more negatively right. than it impacts my day to just do it right but right. like look i've had at some point in the past i've had uh, a wrangler i briefly owned a corvette i briefly owned a miata these are all things Whoa. that have their own special weight big spender right? over here no, see, no look but i'm bragging about how much money he has see it's, it's funny you sit yeah, in that seat and you start junk. like he's talking leaving about because like, he doesn't even have to work well, anymore. i have a corvette a miata, hang on Porsche. Porsche. there's a ktm dirt bike yeah. mention coming <laughs> soon uh but like i got like frustrated with all those vehicles and i do with motorcycles too if you've ever ridden it sturgis like that's a perfect example we're like dude i don't want to oh you bought the same consumer product as me me too that's awesome we're both transporting oh, ourselves in this man. similar fashion i don't feel that much of a connection to somebody else because they have a motorcycle like <laughs> i think there's a limit like i have an ex, i have like x amount of waves in me per day of riding <laughs> so like if if it's a really super, sorry buddy <laughs> if it's a super nice day out and uh, we're cruising up one of the nice curvy roads up, you know, like we have a really nice uh, route that goes up the Delaware River uh, toward Pennsylvania. And like any given weekend that it's decent out, like it's 75% motorcycles. And it's like, okay, hi. So what hi, happens when you hi. roll by like a group ride and there's like a hundred people? You're like, like hey, no. Yeah, I'm just like on. halfway, no, halfway through he runs out of his daily yeah, quota. He's like, well, just sorry. In. The <laughs> second half, doesn't yeah, wave like, that. Guy number just, 37 and back's yeah, like, what's with that guy? Hopefully the first couple guys tell the rest of the group, like, oh, he waved in the beginning. Is that the guy from Brazil? But for me, honestly, like I get pumped for the wave when it's like really crappy out when it's really cold or it's raining or like you know it's just like oh dude 
yeah, you're crazy too, or stupid <laughs> as well as I am. So I don't know. Yeah, the, the wave does get tiresome after a certain amount in one day. So let's move beyond riding. Wait, wait, wait. I think I want. I just want. I want to hear your answer to that. Yeah, you can't not <laughs> you can't, answer yeah. your own question. No. So I think for me, like, it's just as far as like things that motorcyclists tend to do or riding that annoy me. Um, I've been invited to enough group rides where like somebody wants to ride right down the center of the lane, and if you've taken an 101 MSF <laughs> course, the last place you're supposed to ride is down the greasy strip in the middle of the road. Right. And. People well, you're are also either the guy behind you for visibility. Right. I mean, there's a there's a variety of reasons yeah. not to do it. And the other part of that is when you're like on a group ride and someone you don't know is trying to ride right alongside you in a lane. I'm like, right, and you're blocked. Hey, yeah. man, I don't know you. Yeah, yeah. Back off. <laughs> right. I mean, there's very few times like you and I. I'll ride next to you if we're doing a video shoot or something like that. I feel totally. comfortable with you. You and I have done that already. Where mm -hmm. We're sitting bar to bar. Yeah. But like. I have to know you, and I have to feel comfortable with you. Other than yeah. that, stay a couple car I mean, lengths Spurs back. Spurs needs to go out to dinner. Third, with day, a, third date. Yeah, 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 third yeah, yeah. date. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to go out to dinner yeah. with you. I'm going to find out about you know your likes, your dislikes, pina coladas I mean, in the rain, a, perhaps. You know, the, the flip side of that is it, it, it does feel cool when you're riding with a group of your buds that you feel – confident enough sure. with and they're riding that yeah. you know you you are uh but unified not, it's not, it's in your not movements. like the toy ride you know on in thanksgiving yeah, where there's a bunch of people that you don't know <laughs> that are like and you, you can watch them like other. pedaling their bike out and you're just like are you gonna drop yeah. that are you gonna crash that i don't yeah. know so just stay a couple car lengths back but we'll get more <laughs> into that with a later question Lem, so Lem, like, lem's doing the thing that i normally do when i'm in that seat where i try to jump ahead we'll get there <laughs> all right so i want to change the topic a little bit and focus on you two as mechanics i mean you've both built a bunch of bikes, you work on bikes constantly for yourself, for other people. As mechanics, what are some of the personality traits that you've encountered over the years that get under your skin? These are things that riders shouldn't do. There's a, a, a couple things that really drive me crazy is, uh, is what's called an ask hole. An ask hole is a person that asks questions in kind of a machine gun fashion without necessarily asking for the answer or even Listening Absorb to the absorbing the answer and also when you give your educated answer from years of experience and you know formal training and studying service manuals over the years when you give them the correct answer for the issue they're having with their bike they have a better answer that they got from some forum well the message board says that you know i should never lube my chain or i should never <laughs> change my oil and my tire should have 10 psi in them or whatever and it's like okay dude then why are you asking me so the it's like holes, Jeopardy. You have the answer, and they're trying to get the question. <laughs> right. It's just like, did you want me to guess the answer that you read on a forum so that you feel better about the information? Like, so if so, if I were to walk into a mechanic, the note that the public should be taking away is listen to what the mechanic just is telling you. Listen to the mechanic. Yeah. Um, also, you know, we kind of don't see eye to eye on this fact, but um, the folks that want to sit and watch, like, so. In a shop atmosphere where uh, time is money, it's very important to be able to try to get a job done and get the bike fixed and out the door as soon as possible because there are other bikes and people waiting. So if the person who came to bring you your, your bike, you know, their bike to get worked on, wants to stand over your shoulder and ask you a thousand questions about the process and why and how and what tools, and it's like, hey man, you know, that's school. You go to mechanic school for that, this is a workshop that needs, you know, I need to get the work done. So you said that you and Lem disagree on that. What are your thoughts about that? Well, so that- He likes uh, an that, audience. Well, that segues well <laughs> into, my, into my point I was gonna make too. Uh, so I am okay with people watching. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not okay with question asking. I actually, my, uh, even Mrs. Lem, she like does not come in the shop when I'm working because like I can't both like talk to you and give you cogent answers to what I'm doing right. and think about the task at hand. Too so, much brain power required. Yeah, if someone <laughs> wants to watch, I'm totally okay with that. There's nothing uh, I'm gonna do to your bike that I wouldn't do to my own bike. Right. Uh, you know, unless you've specified something different. Hide the hammers. That, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I hide them. Put them right out in the open. Let them know what's coming. There are a lot of hammers in Harley service manuals <laughs> for, you know, in Lemmy's defense. Uh, <laughs> But I, yeah, I don't want I don't want you to ask me questions. But that sort of runs into I, one of the things I've realized uh, in turning wrenches, especially uh, and being paid for it, is there are t um, there are often two types of customers who come to me and say, "Well, I want to learn how to do X, Y, and Z." Mm -hmm. I believe in helping people in motorcycling. Like that's that's something I try and do. 
Um, now, if you tell me you want to learn how to do X, Y, or Z, that's cool. I'm going to make my shop available to you. I will make my tools available to you, and I will make my brain available to you. You, you will bring very a, kind. You will bring a case of beer. <laughs> you will bring a stool for me to sit on, and I will sit there and drink your beer, and I will babysit you to make sure that you don't do anything massively wrong, and I will uh -huh. ask you questions. I will basically turn into the the, the, the person sitting there watching you right. ask a bunch of questions. Why are you I doing will, that? Right. I will be that person Doesn't that you. seem like you're going a little bit tight? Those? <laughs> <laughs> right. <It> seems, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's uh, abusive. <laughs> but I got that. I was like, what does that mean? And I was like, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> um, that is fine with me. There are other people who basically want to do what you're talking about is sit there and watch and ask you a bunch of questions as you yeah. do the job. That's fine. Right. You're going to pay me. <laughs> right. Like, right. There's you brought this to me for a reason, right? <laughs> like, right. if you knew all this, then why are you here? I hope the audience <laughs> is listening at this point because that's what Lem is going to do when he goes beyond the couch. He's going to sit in his garage and wait for you to come over knocking. And right. He's just, you're going to pay him in beer. And uh, and laughter as he watches you destroy your own motorcycle. That's, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm putting. I'm starting my own four hundred one k. Are you only <laughs> beer and laughter yeah. as the input? Uh, I think I may be busy that day for all of you who are watching and listening. I, I think for me, when I think about this, it comes down to um, you know the people that want to ask you a question, but then they want to. They're, they're, they're cost cutters, right? So nothing drives me insane more than someone that calls up or someone that will, will be hanging out. And they're like, well, what would you recommend doing here? And I'm like, oh, well, this is what you need to do. Like, you, this is the suspension you want to put on, or this is the, the right. part that would actually make this work perfectly. And they're like, oh, it's too much money. The question should be, what would you recommend doing here for four hundred and thirty-two dollars? Right, right. Exactly. That's what I have to right. say. Because they're this. like, well, th that sounds great, but like, how can I do it for half of that? I'm like, you can't. You can't. I get it if it's like a modification, right? Like, oh, I, I don't want to spend seven hundred dollars on an exhaust, but it's like, oh, my bike's not running. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you need a regular rectifier. $4. It's two hundred and fifty bucks. That's uh, too much money. Uh, well, then you're going to have a non-running right. motorcycle. Right, like, right. I can't. I can't help you with that. Yeah. So. Joe actually kind of jumped ahead, but this Sorry. goes right into... No, it's okay. I couldn't okay. see into the future. I understand now what <laughs> Lemmy's had to go through when he sits in the seat and I just keep like pushing out points and he's like, bro, calm down. <laughs> All right. So continuing with your expert motorcycle prowess, and oh I use boy. that term very loosely. Yes, thanks. Um, what are some of the modifications that motorcyclists make to their motorcycle that drive them insane when you see them on a bike? Now, this can be either mechanically or aesthetically. If... If a bike is running poorly just because it's old and it needs service, like that's one thing. But if a bike is running poorly because someone like modified it terribly and it's just suffering and it, they're complaining about how it's running so bad because they tore their air box off of their CB or, you know, like <laughs> pod, they, pod, pod air filters yeah, and they're trying to ride in the rain and they don't like, understand they're sucking water. Yeah. Through. Or like just like really shoddy wiring. Like, oh, I don't know why it shuts off. Every Electrical time. tape everywhere. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it, that. That makes me crazy. It's just like, man, you really dug yourself a big hole here with, with these modifications. Um, the other thing, too, is when, you know, like uh, I say it a lot, but I'm an old British bike guy. And uh, British bikes get a bad rep because of the electronics and because they're a smaller displacement than, you know, some of the Harleys and, you know, the more popular old bikes out there. And a, a Triumph or a BSA or a Norton is a very, very strong motorcycle. Um, they're very fast or very powerful, but it's just the fact relatively that relatively so, speaking, relative, you know, for the, its time period. <laughs> okay. But I think, you know, w what the reputation is that they have very bad electronics and they leak and all this, but it's just the fact that not many people know how to get them to run properly. And when they do, I mean, this goes for Harleys or Hondas or whatever, you know, it's just a, a, a nicely tuned motorcycle will run better in stock form than any crazy modified bike that's just not tuned properly. So I see folks that go to all kinds of trouble making a bike look real wild, but it runs like a turd, you know? So it's just like, dude, that's not a really great experience, you know? Like, I, it makes me feel bad for the bike. Like, the bike's ashamed of itself. You were, you, were, you, were you nodding because <laughs> like you agree or disagree? Or you, you, you were kind of uh, like no, moving no, your head I, around I, over I there? I agree. I think for a lot of people who aren't experienced tuners, the closer you stay to stock, the usually... Yeah, the engineer is kind of designed for the middle, right? They shot the middle on everything. Uh -huh. So, like, it, without knowing specifically what you might be doing, um, if you don't know exactly what you're doing inside of a motor, usually leaving it stock is probably Even your... Even just knowing how to tune a carburetor, you know, knowing that, a, that an a eighth of a turn... Art. That doesn't matter. You know, an eighth of a turn on a mixture screw <laughs> no one needs can that. really change the difference What is a bike. mixture screw? What is a carburetor? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking or about. Or a half a degree of timing or something like that, ignition timing, or, you know, that There's kind of thing. There's not a bunch of 90-year-old, like, <laughs> people watching this. You're just, you're, you're I don't know how to hack CDIs or anything yet, Swahili. but... Um, Lem, what do you got for us? Um, 
as far as like modifications that drive me nuts, it's funny. This would probably be across motorsports in general, even extending out to cars. I've told this story many times. You guys have heard it. Um, at some point, I had a customer that we referred to. His name is Dan, and we referred to Dan as Dan Dan the Big Cam Man. <laughs> because Dan had a rock stock motor. It doesn't matter what it was in. And this is one of my favorite stories, this by the way. motor, um, you know, just very bog stock, not a performance-based motor. And he came in to order a cam one day, and he ordered the, the, the wildest spec camshaft we had. And we said, whoa, you got some crazy engine build going on. And he said, absolutely not. <laughs> and he took that <laughs> big, big cam, and he stuffed it in that motor. And that, <laughs> that motor ran like <laughs> <right>. <laughs> it, I mean, it sounded awesome at idle. Right. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, but he got <laughs> to put it the crane so cam sticker on his window, It sounded right? so <laughs> cool. And um, it was just the wrong choice. And it's funny because cams are one of those ones. We have, you know, even here at Revzilla, we have people calling all the time. And I think people just want to buy by the number, right? A bigger number must be better. Right. More lift. Always more lifts. Right. I need more lifts and more torques and it's give me all the durations. Racing. Right. The problem is it, like, runs like ass, like, for most, most <laughs> yeah. of the time. Most people, a super mild cam mm -hmm. is, like, awesome. It's, like, life-changing for most motorcycles. Um, people just have this ten tendency, I think, to overdo it. Um, and then... On a totally separate note, I just want to I just want to pause before we get into the separate note because uh, in in lieu of the fact that this is Lem's last episode in the couch, this is probably the last video that that we're shooting together. I've been working with Lem for over six years now, and I have heard stories about Dan Dan the Big Cam Man <laughs> literally since I started for the past six years, <laughs> and it doesn't get time. old. Like there's still times where I'll be like, tell the story of Dan Dan the Maybe Big we Cam can have Man him on the show one day. It's like <laughs> farts. Farts are always funny. Oh my um, god. And then on a totally separate note, uh, we've discussed this before, Joe and I. Uh, I really cannot stand when people put pokey items on their bike because if you become oh, separated yeah. from your bike, the pokey thing then becomes yeah. a weapon. <laughs> your bike Spike is just, your bike's trying to kill you more you. than usual. Right. We should right. find the B-roll footage of when you and I toured that museum and the guy had the the spikes coming out of the walker. It was it was the the uh, old yes. man walker, and yes. he had the spikes uh, coming yeah. out. So like when the elderly man fell, he was going to impale oh himself on it. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the uh, the popping on the D cell, the exhaust, and the people that want that. I was talking to a guy the other day. I'm not going to name names and throw him under the bus, but he's like, man, I finally I put an exhaust on my bike, and it finally sounds great now. You you roll off, and it just. Pop, 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 pop. And I'm like, that sounds horrible <laughs> because it's poorly tuned. It's not I'm supposed to I'm about to get up off the couch and leave. <laughs> because you like that? Uh, no, I'm that mad right now even just thinking about because it. Because you I'm know that people do that, right? Yes, I'm yeah. aware. Take care of your little babies. All right, so let's we got we got two questions left. We're getting we're getting close to the end. What are some things that you see motorcyclists do that just piss off the general public? Not even something that that would really make you angry, but things that motorcyclists do that just give us all a bad the rap. Pu the public, like you said, not the private. The public. <laughs> the out in the world people. I, uh, I would like to, again, just reiterate, I am just picking things at random here, and I am completely hypocritical, and I, uh, everything <laughs> we, we about know that. me is Answer terrible. Your question. Um, yeah, he's, yeah, you're a hypocrite. He's dancing the, around this. The thing that drives me, like, just, just drives it's me to drink, <laughs> really grinds them gears, is uh, when... I hear a motorcyclist refer to a car driver and a, 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 a motorist as a cager. <laughs> it's true. Here's the thing, because like <laughs> most people in America have uh, who have a motorcycle also have a car. I know not all of you. There's it's like a cage. three. It's there's a cage. like three people who like yeah. go to Costco with their motorcycle who are gonna yell at me and write in and tell <laughs> right, me I'm an idiot. Right. I ride every but day. Even, but even still, like I've just never ridden in a car in my entire life. Right. Like there's a lot of good reasons to have a car instead of a motorcycle, and that's okay. But like, mm -hmm. do we really need to call them cagers? Like, just it's just so dismissive. Like it's yeah. just instantly. I mean, look, these these things weigh a lot more than motorcycles. And if you're on a motorcycle, anybody in one of these cages, even a little ones can mow you over and kill you. Mm -hmm. We should be trying to get along with them. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's it? But yeah, that does I feel like that's what annoys you as a motorcyclist. I feel that wouldn't annoy a driver. I'm looking for I need I, I am need, sure if you were you're telling me if you didn't have a motorcycle and somebody was like whatever, cage, or you just sit there in your cage. That would that, that would drive that me would, insane. Would, but like I'm talking about things that like if you're driving in your cage mm -hmm. down the road <laughs> and somebody you. on a non-cage two-wheel vehicle comes blowing by you, what is something that they could do 
that would just really piss you off and make you be like, oh, well, if like, I don't ride a motorcycle, I'm never going to look at that person in a good way. Well, Dude, there's like nine billion. Yeah, there's yeah, like nine billion it's, things. It's, it's, honestly, it's the I'm exhaust. just looking for an answer for one. Like, yeah, if you got nine billion things, <laughs> let's go with one of them. Loud pipes, splitting lanes super quickly, right. uh, riding really aggressively, punching mirrors, uh, stealing dirt bikes and riding them on the street. Like, there's, there's like, there's like a litany of shit <laughs> yeah, that you can do. Yeah, that's pretty good. There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> right, that's right. what I'm looking yeah, for. He, he sent them all the way over the top. I don't have anything left. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's just like the pegging of the rev limiter thing that just kills me. Like, why are you doing that? Um, I was thinking today, you know, because we've, we've grown up and have a lot of bikes without rev limiters, um, at least electronic rev limiter. For those who maybe not are, yeah, you know, are valve, in the know. Valve float is my rev limiter. Well, you know, a, a rev limiter now on these modern bikes with, a, with modern ignitions, you know, at a certain RPMs, the ignition will intermittently cut out to keep the engine from over revving. Or the fuel. Or the fuel. So, but uh, in in what does it sound like? It goes. Rah, bah, 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 bah. Or it depends on how many cylinders <laughs> like, it is. You like know, it. the the more cylinders, the quicker it cuts out. But so like a, give me a four cylinder. Like a J it's like. And then some of the V twins are like. This is a real show. You people, you people are watching and listening. There's people trying. They were paying Levy for this for years. It's so dumb. Um, yeah, so that kills me. But I was thinking of, of you know, if, if I tried to hit the rev limiter on any of my 60s bikes, it would be the rod shooting out of the front of the engine case, um, which would quickly limit the revs to zero. Um, so that kills me. People are just over revving and just disrespectful. Like, you know, my, my, a couple of my close friends had a, had a kid recently, and they were out to brunch or something like that on, on some Sunday morning, and they had their kid with them. And they said that this dude pulls up on a, on a you know, a big twin bike, and it's just revving the bike's exhaust, like, basically into the back of their kid's head at brunch. Like, I bet that kid knew how yeah. badass that bike was. <laughs> no, it's just like, dude, come on, man. Well, I think like, it's, it's respect the public. It's, it's, it's yeah. showing a little bit of respect to where you're at. If you're out in the middle of the woods, and, like, you just want to sit there, like, I'm thinking of that time that you and I went to that uh, lowbrow get down in Ohio, and there was that dude that had the, the bike, and you just sat there, like, holding no, it wide open. Still at, like, not three okay. in the morning yeah. after an accident. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't okay with that, but at least it wasn't in, like, yeah. you know, in the public back of a square. Yeah. 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 But I think, uh, so m you, you mentioned that, and it makes me think of, like, group rides, right? It's one thing if it's, like, you know, four or five people that are riding respectively in, in, in the right lane. Mm -hmm. It's another thing when there's, like, a hundred people, and they're not riding the correct way over all over group the road. Hang on, that's, like, but that's a damned if you do damned if you don't situation here's why so what, what are your options you got a big you want to do a big ride no permit and then you're just clogging up everything you get a permit the cops block off the road cool if you have to cross the parade line merry christmas that's going to take you 40 minutes or you can ride illegally block off an intersection and run everybody through as fast as possible and then all the people in the cars get pissed off anyway there's like no good way to deal with that the, the i'm just tip, saying my, like, my takeaway is try not to have too many friends just have one or two. You're doing an excellent You're doing job. Great job. Yeah. You got, you got like say, two friends. Yeah. I mean, you know. And four, one of them's leaving you. Four quarters so. is better than a hundred pennies, right? You know. So. I, you know, I, again, it's not, it's not, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not saying that it's something that I do or don't do. I don't do group rides too often outside of my friend group. Um, but I think that that is something that the public can see, especially mm -hmm. when within that group, depending on the style of riding they're doing. Some of them are taking over the whole road. Some of them are doing wheelies. Like I'm thinking back to that trip to Austin. Some of them made. are doing ten under in the left lane. Well, so that's the that's the other aspect. There's two different. There's like right. the wild and aggressive group rides, and there's the ones that are like we're gonna drive 45 and 65. A yeah, and it's like just get over to the right lane, have your group experience, there's, but just do it here. I mean, there's so a, people the can flip, pass you. The flip side of that is like right now, um, you know, you see a lot of toy runs and stuff like that. You know, and that that is somewhat of a positive. Thing but for. that's also the toy runs that I've done around this time of year have been permitted. And it's like, we're going to ride for five miles down a straight line and we're going to go and take these toys from this location to this location. And, mm -hmm. and it, it runs fairly smoothly. Mm -hmm. I think to my point or to, to Lem's point, like it's the unsanctioned group rides where it's like, you can do that. Just if it's a two lane highway, stay in the right lane and just yeah. let people pass you. Yeah. I, I, I see a lot of folks like that are not familiar with a group ride who may be, you know, like you said, jamming in the right lane and they're blocking cars from coming onto the highway or the car is trying to come onto the on-ramp and, and, you know, like the group won't let them in or, or they get mad that a car has to cut through the group. It's just like, man, you know, like we're out having a good time. This person may be going to work on a Sunday morning or something like that, right. you know? So you just have to think like most people in cars are just trying to Go take care of well, business. The reason, you know? the reason that I almost bring you mean this the up. cagers. <laughs> yeah, the, cage, the cagers are just trying to go to the acme well, and pick the up reason, some cold The cuts. reason that I bring <laughs> the reason that I bring this up is that when Lem was listing off his his 
you know, his litany there in the beginning of all the things <laughs> when he was on his rant <laughs> was lane splitting, right? Because lane splitting is one of those things that, like, I really believe should be allowed everywhere. And I used to live in California, in California. Let me know when you convince everybody of that. I, well, so that's the problem <laughs> is that you don't have to convince other motorcyclists. You have to convince the mass general public right. that we should be allowed to do this. So if you're lane splitting in an area where it's not legal, the biggest problem there is that the people in the cars don't know to expect right, it. Right, yeah, they're not really hip to it. So so that's just going to make them angry, and then when it comes time to vote, they're going to be like, no, I don't want to vote for this. Whereas in California... Well, the, to you help know, change your mind, what you need to do is knock off their mirrors. <laughs> Everyone knows that. <laughs> just look at YouTube. That's, I mean, that's how, you, that's how, that's how you're supposed to do it. It's right, state law yeah. in a couple of states. I think you have to knock Either off way, mirrors. Either way, I think that if all motorcyclists were a little more respectful, Respectful of the cagers and realize that if we can get them to like us, right. we can probably get a lot more strides. of the stuff that we want to yeah, get done right. done. But that now brings us to the last question. This is something that Lemmy started off by by bringing up in the very beginning, and then Joe kind of jumped in on. And the final question is: We're all full of. <laughs> so <laughs> that's we, a statement. That's we've not a talked question. a lot about what grinds our gears. Well, or we think up. grinds the public. <laughs> what are the gas holes on the couch oh right now. What God. are we guilty of? What's Go one ahead, thing? No, don't know. You come in like all this, first. all this stuff that we've all sat right. here and we we thrown all people right. under the bus. What do we do? Dude, I'm guilty, guilty of? of all of the things. All of the things. There you go. <laughs> I have bikes with wide open pipes and no mufflers. I have definitely split lanes. Half my bikes don't have any mirrors or anything like that. I I just you know I probably woken my fair share of people up with with my bikes i've definitely done wheelies in places that i should not be doing wheelies and skids and jumping things on bikes that just shouldn't be jumped in places that weren't ever designed I feel like to you're be not jumped. leaving anything for lemmy at this point <laughs> i'm I feel sitting like you're just here thinking i'm like man this uh, he's just taking them all we're, gonna, me get, too. we're gonna get through this question. i definitely <laughs> have had um when i had restored my 70s shovel head the return oil line popped off the oil tank and proceeded to dump all of my oil onto the pavement. Um, Did you go back and clean it up? I cleaned it up as best as I could, but (laughs) I definitely left a permanent stain that's still there like 10 years later. Um, You know, like, yeah, man, you know, like that's why this is just for fun because obviously we're all guilty of that. You talk about, you know, riding safe and don't speed. And uh, dude, you and I have definitely gone triple digits in places that you shouldn't even be going this, you know, like if, uh, the, law, if the law is watching, he's listening right now. Yeah. I, he's talking I, I kilometers, know. folks. Yeah, right. Kilometers. I've done 100 kilometers an hour. <laughs> I think that you and I have done triple digits. Stop saying these things on, on live TV. Dirt. On podcast, not live even podcast. pavement. Oh my this god! Is, this yeah, is it's, it's a video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's not this. live. You're right. Um, <laughs> Edit that out. But yeah, man. You know, is there I, anything left for you at this point? I am definitely guilty of all things and even more. Uh, you've summed up my point. So I don't know if I don't know if we can get a camera on here. My card to this answer, I have two word answer. It says for those of you who are listening, to this, it says literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I mean I. I dress like a flood victim. I neglect personal hygiene. I live That's every offensive s- to flood victims. I know, but I, li- <laughs> I live every stereotype possible, I think. Uh, I'm currently sitting here in a Harley Davidson t-shirt because you have to. if you have a Harley, you have to have Harley everything all the time. Mm. I, I even have Harley undies at home. Um, uh. I, yeah, I do. I've committed like every possible sin. I've ridden off road illegally. I've, you know, in addition to your, your mess of your litany of crimes, <laughs> sins, and other, other offensive acts towards nature and humans. Um, I, yeah, like when all the things. Like that, it sounds so much I know, but that's why and it's animals. Like, if you're riding off road illegally, think of all the snakes that you've But killed. that's why it's like oh. such a bummer too, to like even, even do this episode because like it, lane splitting is an excellent one too, right? Like I have clipped past people between cars. I mean, I'm talking like pushing triple digit speeds like way faster that's than I very should be dangerous yeah, it's about 90 miles dangerous. an hour right and i'll do 92 <laughs> are you saying 97 I miles we were ta- an hour i thought we were talking kilometers oh, i'm very confused man so uh, <laughs> but then by the same token too like i'll see somebody do it to me when i'm like in my truck or something and then i'm like oh what the guy is crazy right. you know it's, it's like this is like george, well this is like george carlin right like everybody going slower than you on the interstate's an idiot and everybody going faster is an asshole or whatever right. whatever but it's like the same right. thing like it's very i understand why it irritates other people but i still do it because it's fun uh also i don't own any motorcycles that have mufflers on them and i have a couple motorcycles so sorry about <laughs> I, that too, so guys. To, to, dis- to disappoint both of you i i've definitely been <laughs> guilty of being the asshole when i go to the mechanic where i'm like oh like no way we know we know we know and then we you know. give me an answer i'm like i don't agree with that yeah. and you're just like well then don't ask me that right so, I, that's not what the forum said 
<laughs> well, I don't. I don't do. Yeah, I guess. Well, I guess for me, it's like I second guess it. I'm like, well, that's not what I've read. And well, if like, you want, you're just thirsty just, for knowledge. Well, yeah. just throw, even if you're not reading the forums, that's just, that's a good way of putting it. I'm thirsty for knowledge. I just want all the all the knowledge. Even if even <laughs> if you're not on the forums, you're not doing that. Just throw that in at the end of the conversation anyway. Because mechanics love that. They love that. Well, yeah. I saw something different on the forum. Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> all the lessons of what you should be doing on the road and when you're speaking oh to your mechanic. God. That is going to wrap up the final episode of High Side Low Side. With Lem Lem on the couch with us, but we still got another. We have one more. There's more but wait, Single there's tier. more. There's more. Single and like Joe tier. said, the the final episode that, that Joe and I have coming for season two is going to be pretty special. We're pretty excited about it. So make sure you tune in for the finale this year and uh, and check out what we've got going on. But for right now, at the, at the, at the, at the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, I'll handle, give you. Go I'll ahead. Let, why don't you Why don't you take us out for the final time? I'll handle this. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you guys for listening, not just to this episode, uh, but to all of them uh, from the very bottom of my heart. Uh, I'm going to sign us off. This is Spurgy. You guys know Joe Zito. I'm Lem, of course. And truly, I'm out of here.